Thank you Welcome. so much. Thank you. Yep. How's everyone going? Doing? Oh, it's, it's been uh, like, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate the, the invite. Um, it's fun to be back at Mankato. Uh, this is where I went to college and, and where I graduated um, from with an education degree. And so we spent the afternoon um, at just sort of walking through campus, the things that have stayed the same, the things that have changed. Um, a lot of it stayed the same and a lot of it's changed. One of the things that was, uh, that was interesting is, um, which I obviously knew was Gage where, um, where I, with the dorm I was in, it got demolished and is gone. So just seeing like the parking lot there, I was like, gosh, like I remember when I was in, in uh, your seat or watching on the Zooms, I remember feeling like, you know what, I was never going to get older, right? And all of a sudden I'm looking around going like, wow, now I'm that person. Um, so it was really fun today. We spent a lot of time. We're going to share, um, we're going to share the videos and some of the stuff that we did today. Uh, but I, th I, I want to share this, this story. Um, and, and oddly enough, it's this, this pair of mittens. Um, we went, uh, we had, uh, we went to the Barnes and Noble, uh, bookstore today. Um, and we had some amazing staff that had helped us out. Um, Derek, Janine and Lisa, um, who were phenomenal. And we went out and, um, and purchased sweatshirts and hats and mittens, um, for all of you that are here in person. So, um, we've got hats, mittens, um, t uh, sweatshirts from Mankato. You can pick them out at the end. Like I said to, like I said to my team that's, that's with me today, I know that the, the people that are determined to sit in these seats are the ones that have the most motivation. And so I just wanted to recognize and reward all of you for that. But what happened is, is the, the, these mittens stood out. And what was so interesting about the mittens is that's actually how I started in real estate. Early on in my career, one of the things that um, I had noticed is early in social, sort of the social media landscape was a lot of people in life were so focused on if I get this many likes, if I get this many comments, if I get this, back then there wasn't hearts and care and all the other uh, things that, that go on posts. Um, but what it was likes, if I get so many likes or shares, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my aunt, my uncle said I can get a pet, a turtle, a cat, a dog, whatever it may be, right? And so I, I sat there and I said like, this is what's wrong with the world. Like that we're so focused and it's so self-serving. Like if we put that out there, then we get something back. And so what I did is, and this is way back at the beginning, is I put up a post and I said for every, it, it was actually the weather was very similar to what it is now. The weather is you know, it's, it's cold. Like it's really cold. My feet are still warming up. Um, the weather was very similar. And I said, let's go help those in need by getting a mittens, hats, and scarves. And so I put this post up and I said, for everyone that, that comments, that likes, that, that, that shares it, every single one of those, I'm going to go out and buy a pair of mittens for someone in need. Now, this was at the beginning of my career, like the absolute beginning. I had no business putting something out there of that level, um, but we got 20, I got 2,500 likes. So I got 2,500 likes and, and I followed through with the commitment and I went out and bought 2,500 pair of mittens. So I bought 2,500 pair of mittens and what we did is we went and delivered. And back then it was just me, there was no team, um, there, was no, there was no additional support. Um, is went out and, and delivered the mittens to the places that, that I found through the people that followed me had given me a suggestions, right? So um, there was a place where uh, free and reduced lunch was really high. Um, there was another place where there was a lot of abuse and addiction and things like that. And so I went and delivered these mittens. But the reason why I share that story is that everyone sees the branding, the marketing, if you follow me on social media and all those other places, what you'll, what you'll not see is that the real focus of this entire thing is all about leadership, all about being generous and all about giving back to people. And that's what the foundation of what we are and who we are. But a lot of times people see billboards, radio, TV, social media, all these other things, and people start to get a different impression of who we really are. Right. And so I share that because that was before people know, knew who we were. That was before the annoying billboards and radio and TV and all this stuff was out there. Those are the types of things at the core of who I am and who we are. That's what it looks like. 
but to the, to the outside world, there are a certain percentage of people that if we haven't been in a certain situation, we think it looks a certain way, right? So if we haven't been, if, if we haven't been on a billboard, we think that being on a billboard, you must be confident or you must be arrogant or you must be a jerk. Like those are the things that we've been trained in society that if we haven't been in these certain areas, that that's what it looks like. But if you pull back the curtain inside of our organization, the reason we're as successful as we are today is because of our people. Like if you don't have great people, you won't succeed in anything in life. And what I wanted to talk about today on Zoom and, and here in person is really the leadership component as well as the branding component. Because if you have great marketing, but you don't have great people or you don't treat people well, they're not gonna stay and they're not gonna execute on the mission. And so you have to have a combination of both. When you cast that vision and you put yourself out there, one of the most important things is knowing that you can fulfill with the brand promise that you put out there, right? And so when you think about business and you think about life, because all of us actually have a personal brand, whether you have a business today or not, you have some sort of personal brand, whether it's the way that you treat people, whether it's, it's, the, it's the way that you're seen on social media, that reputation stays with you throughout your entire life. Whether you decide to go into business, join a team, become an employee, whatever it may be, there are certain things about who you are and with your brand that matter. And so when we put ourselves out there, we have so many people that have come together and they believe the same things that we do, right? And so that's why you see in sports, the best teams that win have the strongest locker room every single time. They're not usually the most talented. You have a lot of like-minded people that are all together, right? And so they're all going the same direction. That's how you win at life. And that's personal and professional. Like one of the other things that we see in business is that if the people around you aren't supporting your dreams and your goals, and you're not feeling like you're really getting lifted up, it might be time to evaluate what does your circle look like? One of the things that I know really well about personal development and about growth is that I can tell what, who people spend time with based on what they say. I know, like the conversations and the things that people are sharing and what they're doing, I know who the people are that they spend time with based on what that is. And you see it so fast. And when you look at the world today, there are two different ways that you can look at things from a real scarcity mindset or a huge abundance mindset where everything that you see is there's opportunity, things are great, especially in the last year with all of the, the major challenges that we've faced as a world, like there are two different ways to look at that. You can look at that as a way that's like an opportunity. Maybe you get more time with yourself, right? So maybe this is a self-reflection period of like, what do I really want to do with my life? Like, what do I really want to do? What am I passionate about? Like, those are the types of things as we've become a bit more isolated, like we've had a lot more time with ourselves. We've had a lot more times with ourselves. And so when you look at our organization, you look at the community that, that all, everyone in our organization has put together, when you're all together and you're, you're lifting one another up, if someone has a bad day, you reach down and you lift them up. And if you're up, you, you can stay up because you have that community of support, right? And that's what I've seen throughout life is that I've been fortunate enough to have so many people around the country that have reached down and lifted me up when I've had a bad day, a bad time. Maybe I wasn't going down the right direction. And what else I noticed too is that when you really look about at leadership and marketing and how it all connects is we wouldn't be where we are today if we didn't ask great questions. If we didn't ask great questions. Everywhere that we go, we ask questions, a lot of them. So I'll, all the time I'll have people that will, that will come up to me and one of the main things that I do is I just start asking questions, lots of questions. I never, I never solve anyone's problems. I just ask questions and I help them and lead them to sort of that, their own discovery. And I think what you'll find throughout life is that you'll never be able to change the way that someone thinks. You'll never be able to change the way that someone acts. They need to take their words and their action to do it. And I've seen it so many times where you have someone that is so talented or you have someone that you're like, this person is gonna do so much in the world but they don't want it for themselves. They don't want it for themselves. And I've seen it over and over and over again. And so all I wanna to share today about that is if you're in that position or you know someone that's in that position, stop talking and start taking action. There's far too many people in this world right now that all they wanna do is talk on social media about all the problems, whether that's 
in their personal life, whether that's things that they can't control, whatever it may be, it's time that we start taking more action instead of just talking so much. And you see it over and over again. And so what we're so fortunate to have inside of our organization is we have a group of the most incredible human beings that you have ever seen, and they're all action takers. They take action, personally, professionally, and it's not just taking action in business, it's taking action in helping the communities that we serve. And that's the big difference. The more that we give back and the more that we invest our time, treasures, and talents to the people that we are supporting and the people that are supporting us, it's a two-way street, by the way. It is not a one-way street. And a lot of the people in our community will never buy or sell a house with us, but we fundamentally believe that it is the right thing to do to serve and help and give back to them. And so when you think about how this all works, one of the things that I've been sharing so far that the umbrella of all of this is teamwork. It's teamwork. One of the things that I see often in the world today, when people are entering a career, maybe just finishing college, or maybe they're in transition in their life, is they don't know how to work with a team. They just don't know how to connect, how to communicate with others. It's one of the biggest challenges that I see today. You see someone that is super talented, but the minute that you start putting people around that person, they don't know how to function. They don't know if they should say how they really feel. They don't know if they should just sit back and wait and, wait and watch. And, and, and as you look at whatever everyone wants to do that's watching online or is here today in person, whatever you wanna do in life, I think the best skill that you can exercise and use and get good at is working on a team, is working on a team. And it's amazing when I look at the, uh, when I look at my journey as a, um, when, I was, when I was younger, um, growing up in, in, in playing sports, the lessons that I learned from playing group sports, team sports, are the same principles today. They really are. Like they're the same exact things. And I would share for a lot of people, there are sports that are just individual, right? There are sports that where you don't have the opportunity to work on a team. There are business opportunities in the world, volunteer opportunities, where maybe it's not really a team structure. Obviously, there are public safety recommendations and CDC recommendations on how we can get together as a group and what team environments look like. We obviously have to follow those. But in general, the more that you can insert yourself into a situation where there are other people in other teams, you will make a huge investment in where you're going in life. I promise you. I, I watch it over and over again. People come in to our organization and the ones that have experience on working in a team, they take off. The other part of being on a team that matters so much is accountability. Accountability. When you look at being on a team, one of the things that matters is if you're in a group environment or you're in a team, you're accountable to others, right? Like you have to do whatever your duty is because everyone else is counting on you to do whatever it is that you need to do, right? And so when you put yourself in that situation, you also have to make sure that you're okay being held accountable. It's another thing where I see a lot of people falling short is that they hear the word accountability and they think, I don't want anyone to babysit me. I don't need anyone to babysit me. I don't need anyone to oversee me. Just so you know, we all need it, including myself. We all need accountability. We need people around us that are challenging us. And that's the area where I think we can all grow. The more that we can have others hold us accountable, the more that we're gonna grow. This is why you see people all the time that will put public declarations out there like, I'm gonna lose this much weight by this date, or I'm gonna take this trip with it on this date. Whatever those things are, it's gonna make, it will make a huge difference when you put it out there to others. Now, where the magic comes is when you actually have people that will hold you accountable when you're, when you're not going in the right direction. When you're, you put this promise out there, you made this commitment, and you're falling short, if you have people around you that are gonna challenge you, that are gonna tell you no, and are gonna push you when you're not doing the right things, you need more of those people. You need the people around you that are gonna force you and push you hard. That's how you grow. I've been fortunate to have so many mentors and so many coaches. I've also put myself in some very challenging environments to grow. And I would just say for all of you, that's how you get to the next level. And everyone in here and everyone watching has a, has a, a desire of what level they wanna be at. 
Some, your, your commitment is, is a level that you're like, you know what, I'm content with this, whether that's personally or professionally. And then there's others that you're gonna keep driving and keep driving and keep driving and you're never gonna be content. You just want more, 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 and more looks different to everyone. You know, when I, when I was younger, I always thought more meant more money. Like I always thought when someone said they wanted more, it meant like, hey, like they just need to get to the next level because they want more money. But as I've grown, and, and this is, I would say that my perspective is a little skewed because I only spend time around people that are focused on giving back. But it's amazing as you grow through life, what things become important. Like as, it, as you evolve, things start to change in a really big way. Like in what, used to, what you used to think was important is no longer important. And as you start to level up the circle and the people you spend time with, it starts to get a lot more clear on why you're all here. I mean, life is really short. Like, I mean, I think we've seen in the last year that all the things that have happened, like life can be taken away in a matter of seconds. And I was, um, I, w- I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day. And one of the things that, that, um, that he shared is when he wakes up in the morning, he asks this question, who needs me on my A game today? Who needs me on my A game today? Every single day, who needs me on my A game today? And what he said after that's what stuck with me. He said, that's the way I'm going to go out. That's the way I'm going to go out. If today's my last day, I'm, I'm going to go out knowing that I'm going to deliver my A game every single day. And think about that. If, if tomorrow's the last day for anyone that's watching or here, what kind of impact are you making on people? The people that you're connected to. Like those are the types of things that, and you know what? When a lot of us are younger, like, you know what? Fortunate to have great health, a lot of, a lot of things going most people's ways. Like it can change in a moment's notice. I mean, I can tell you firsthand as, as we've grown our company, we've dealt with a lot of tragedies. Like inside of our company and people directly connected to so many, like I, I've seen first degree, secondary, third degree relationships, friendships that have, that have been impacted. We've had, uh, unfortunately we've had people pass away. I've seen so much tragedy. And I just wanna share with you as we, as we look at life, like we have one life to live. And so how are you gonna live it? And I, I, don't, I don't want anyone that's listening or, or, or here today to think like, oh yeah, like whatever, it won't happen to me. I've firsthand seen it happen to people that said they'd ne- it never happened to them. I've firsthand seen it. And so right now, we have the greatest opportunity in the world. Like when you look at branding, when you look at marketing, when you look at like video, like look at the ability to do video. I probably recorded on the way down here and throughout the afternoon, I probably recorded about five hours of video today. Five hours from long, you know, mic'd up all day to personal video messages to people in our company, people in our community, acknowledging people that I met today, like just delivering videos, 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds, nothing super long. Just upload it right into iMessage or Android if you have an Android and just deliver that acknowledgement piece to people that you recognize that you see around. Like just, it's so easy now. All it takes is pulling out your phone and hitting the record button. But the part that's the hardest, no one likes what they look like. No one likes how they sound. Like, oh my gosh, is that me? Like, right? It's like everyone has that. I mean, I have the same way. Same way, right? Everyone has that insecurity. And I just want to say that If you want to get to the next level in whatever you want in life, video is not an option anymore. Video is not an option. And I don't want to be like another speaker that's saying, do video, do this. I'm firsthand proof. When I started doing video in 2010, I'll tell you the story. In 2010, I went out and I bought a DSLR camera. And by the way, this was a year process. And I'll explain why in a second. I went out and bought a DSLR camera tripod. Once I got the tripod, then I realized I needed a remote, right? So I needed a remote to turn on the video, right? I was like, well, I don't have any, I couldn't afford anyone, right? So I couldn't hire anyone to record video. So I needed a little mic. So I got the mic. Once I got the mic, I was like, wow, I need some lights. So I bought the, you know, at that time, eBay, I bought, you know, a, a, like a soft light kit for $30 on eBay. You know, the lights were terrible. The fabric was bad. Like every part of it was, was, was very low quality. Then I got that, then I was like, well, now I need suits. I don't have any suits. So then I went to Men's Warehouse and I bought 15 suits for the price of one. Um, And then after I got the suits, I'm I'm telling you the full story right now. I went and got the suits. Once I got the suits back, I was like, well, I don't have a garment rack. 
So then I went and bought a garment rack, but then, then I bought the garment rack and I said, well, I don't have a backdrop. I can't, I can't shoot videos on just a standard back wall. Like I need, and, and I didn't know how to edit green screen. That's, you know, I mean now, you know, green screen's not as popular as it once was, but I didn't know how to edit green screen. So I knew that I had to go out and actually get a vinyl backdrop of the Twin Cities skyline. So I took my DSLR camera, I went on Franklin Avenue right above 35W, and I waited for the perfect Sunday where it was just the sun was just shining perfectly on the buildings. I took a photo, I ordered online, I got the backdrop, backdrop came, I had the backdrop ready, I had the camera, I had everything else. Problem was once I got the backdrop, what I didn't uh, anticipate because I, I had no idea about video or editing or anything, is that there were wrinkles in the vinyl. So then when I shot the video, you could see all the creases in the backdrop. When really what I was trying to do is make it look like I was green screen editing, even though I didn't know how to green screen. So then I went to Home Depot and I got all the clips and I clipped all the vinyl, all the sides of the vinyl, the top with the little bars on each side. And I got all the wrinkles perfectly out. And then I was actually ready to start doing video. None of those things matters, but I had, it was avoidance. It was avoidance. None of it mattered. Like I didn't need any of those things today. Like, you know what? I'm, I'm on the parking lot with my video in the car. I mean, I don't, none of that matters, but forever. I thought like, I'm just busy getting ready to get ready, to get ready, to get ready, to just avoid what we all know we need to do. And there are so many people in life that are just like that. They just keep talking and they just keep getting busy to get busy. They're, well, yeah, no, we're working on that. I'm gonna do this. I might take action. I need to order this thing because I can't do it without that one. And it was amazing to me how much time I spent doing nothing. I mean, it was like a year, a year of avoiding being on video. I finally got to a point where I couldn't buy anything else. I didn't have any more money. So I had to get started. And what I did then is I just recorded videos for eight hours a day, eight hours a day, six days a week. And I'm not even joking. And the videos were probably five seconds, maybe 10 seconds if I got really lucky with my words. And I took a piece of paper and I put the piece of paper right above the camera lens because I thought if I was almost looking directly at it, but I couldn't afford a teleprompter. So I took a piece of paper and I just had, I had blank spots for where I needed to fill in the city name. And it was just very much like this. Are you looking for a real estate agent in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Please call Chris Lindahl. Thank you. That were my, that was my, that was my videos. And I, and, and that's all I could do. I couldn't do anymore. I could not even talk anymore. I couldn't do any more than that. I wasn't capable. So I share that because now here I am speaking all over the country with no notes, no preparation, with no idea what I'm gonna say, how I'm gonna say it. And that's what happens with practice and being committed. And some people in life are committed and others aren't. Are you committed to doing eight hours of video a day to be successful? We always see when someone finishes first in the marathon and we're like, wow, that person's incredible, but we don't see them training underwater for years. We don't see all the other things that happen behind the scenes. It's the same thing for our company. People see the billboards, the radio, the TV, the social media, all the press, the articles, all that stuff, but they don't see the years of years and years of being uncomfortable, of not being great at really anything, but being committed the whole time being committed to the entire time. And that's what I want everyone to take away is that if I can do it, anyone can. And I'm not even kidding. If I can do this, anyone can. Because if you look at where I was at the beginning, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. Now I'm my own worst critic, just like you are for yourself, but I'm telling you the truth. It was bad, really bad. And I look at those videos and I want to throw up every time I look at them because they were that bad. But at the same time, I'm glad I have them because it reminds me of where I started. I started there. I didn't have anything. I didn't have any resources. All I had was my time. And a lot of people watching and a lot of people in here have that exact same thing. And what's happening in life right now is people are throwing their time away. Like whether that's on the device, whether it's screen time, whether it's the decisions that we're making, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. We all have the same time but we, we're, we're not making the right decisions. We're not making the right decisions. And part of it is, in a lot of cases, the people around us aren't the right influences. They're not the right people. Like I only spend my time around really big thinkers that challenge me to think bigger. 
And I'm constantly trying to figure out how do I think bigger? How do I give back more? How do I invest more? How do I become a better leader? I'm always challenging myself every single day to grow and be better. The other thing that's happened in the world that I didn't have as much access to when I first started is the amount of free content out there on the internet, on social media, where we can learn how to do anything without spending any money. We can learn anything we want if we invest and, and we really wanna be focused on being a student first, we can learn how to do anything. I mean, the amount of content that we're putting on our social media and, and, and all of the stuff that we're putting out there for free, our books, everything that we've done, we just keep pushing and giving everything back to everyone. Everyone's doing that now, right? Because we're in such an attention-based economy that the more value that we give, the more that we give back, the more people wanna pay attention to what we're doing. And the, and the differences in, in the world today, it's attention. You think a lot about a lot of the industries and a lot of things that happen. Yes, there are a lot of things that we do in our business and at KLRE that are next level, that are very innovative. But when you think about business, a lot of this stuff is commodity. I mean, there's very, very similar businesses, right? A lot of competition. I mean, in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Colorado, where uh, KLRE is licensed now, there are tens of thousands of real estate agents. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of real estate agents, right? So there's a lot of people, a lot of noise, and the reason why we've been successful is because of the attention. And once you get the attention, you get the trust, you get the followers, and as long as you continue to put out great content, educational content, not super salesy, no one's interested in following anything that's salesy anymore. Right there, everyone is done with the hard sell, whether that's on video or social media posts. It's exactly why we have our, our live streams going on Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and why we brought all of our equipment today was to give everything that I'm sharing today away to everyone, right? That's the world that we live in. All of you in here and everyone watching, you all have the opportunity to document your journey from your cell phone. That, it didn't used to be that way. It didn't used to be that way. So you can walk around, you can take your phone, you can document anything that you, that you want. You can go online, you can buy a lav mic or a, a cheap mic for $10. You can buy a selfie light for $7. Like everyone has, you can buy a phone holder if you wanna hold the phone out further. Everyone has the opportunity to do all of this, yet no one is. And that's the beautiful thing about life and this is what I've learned is that when you look at who shows up here and you look at who's here in person, you look at the people that are watching uh, online, there's probably a handful of people total through the thousands of people that are watching and the, and, and the people in the room that will take action on anything that I'm sharing. Like there's a handful, maybe, maybe. And that's the greatest opportunity. Online courses, online coaching certifications, 90% of those classes go unopened. Yet, there are people who are constantly like, I need to buy this, I need to buy that, I want this, I need this self-help, I need to learn that, I need to do this, and they never do anything with it. And so when you look at life, if you have the ability or the mindset, and you can train yourself to take action, you can do whatever you want in life. You can do anything that you want. You start adding a few people around you that encourage you and push you to go to the next level, it's amazing what you can accomplish. It really is. And when you look at, our branding and our marketing, and you look at the leadership, you look at the amazing people that we have, you look at how it all comes together. One of the biggest things about branding and, and, and leadership and, and, and marketing and all these things is omnipresence, right? Is being omnipresent, where everywhere you go, you're like, I see them here, I see them here, I hear them there, they're everywhere, right? And then you mix in, and, and what the next level of being omnipresent is, is the actual value that you're providing, right? Like just creating marketing is one thing to get attention, but once you start giving people value and you start investing in them and giving them another level of what you know they need, that's when people really become loyal. It's because like you look at all the brands out there, look at all the podcasts and look at all the content on YouTube and all these places. Think about the people that you follow and that you watch and that you listen to. Why are you listening? Why are you watching? It's because they're giving you so much value. It really is. And that's such a huge, 
That's such a huge opportunity in the, in the space that we're in today. What I love about it, and this was the insecurity that I had, I always thought that I never had anything interesting to share, right? I thought, well, what do I have that anyone else would be interested in? And we almost start to get like a creative writer's type block where we kind of forget the things that we've done in life that there are a lot of people that didn't have an experience those same things. That if we were documenting that journey and we were documenting those things, that people would actually watch and listen. They would watch and listen if we put it out there. The other thing that I've learned about marketing and branding is that we always are trained to think that we need tens of thousands of followers to have a successful career, have a successful company. We think like, wow, like we're in such an influencer, you know, sort of influencer world that we live in today. We think, well, if I don't have 100,000 followers, I can't sell anything or I can't open a business or why should I put a video out if I only have 500 people that follow me? No one's gonna find what I'm doing interesting. We've been trained that we need so much. And what we, for, what we forget is every single one of those impressions or those views that we see on our posts, those are eyeballs, those are human beings, each one. It doesn't take many people to make a difference in the world. And I think for, forever, you know, we've been thinking like, we need all these crazy followings and go, you know, people are going and buying fake followers all over and think they need to really like make it look like they're doing more in life than they really are when they have 200 super loyal people that are in their corner that would support any business, any dream that any of you have. The people that you need to succeed at the highest level are already connected to you. The question is, are you actually going to be top of mind and are you gonna put yourself out there? Like everyone has the ability to have as much success as you want from the people that you already know. The difference is, is most people don't ask. Most people don't put themselves out there. And then the people that are in your corner, in your circle, don't even know. They don't even know that you need that. They don't even know that you started that, right? I can't tell you how often that I get friend requests on social media from other real estate professionals and mortgage and title and insurance and all the industries that are related to the industry. I can't tell you how many people don't even have their company name or what they do on their profile on social media. The majority. The majority don't even have their company name or what they do on their social media profile. The majority. Right? In, in the world that we live in today, I can tell you right now that if you're in a business or you work for a company or you're, you're in an internship or um, whatever that may be for you, that if consumers can't go and look you up and see what you do, they're probably not going to use you. Like we all have become stalkers on the internet. We have. Like when you're going to do business with a person, you are going to go look them up. You're going to Google them. You're going to figure out whatever you can to learn more about them, right? It happens over and over again. And so I would just share with you, make sure that you know what your search looks like, what your profiles look like. Just spend a few minutes auditing, what does all that look like? If I'm going into a job interview, or if I'm starting a company, or if I'm going to a meeting, or a mastermind, or a coffee, or an event, or whatever it may be, what will the takeaway be if I'm meeting with you and I, and I decide to do a search? What am I gonna see? What am I gonna see? If I'm not friends with you, what am I gonna see? Is your profile public, private, limited? What fields are gonna be visible? These are the things that are happening in the world today. We are all looking and vetting every single person when we go out to do business with them. Whether we admit it or not, that is exactly what is happening. And so make sure that whatever it is that you are looking to do in life, make sure that what you want to be known for, and by the way, everyone has something different. So I'm not saying what it should or shouldn't be because it's whatever you want it to be. Make sure that it looks right for what you want it to be. And when you put it out there, now when you have a conversation, now when you meet with someone, then when they go look you up, it's consistent. The other thing that tends to happen when I look at solopreneurs, business owners, entrepreneurs, is there's a lot of confusion on what people actually do. 
one of the things that, that has really catapulted us to the, another level is our consistency on every single thing that we do. When Chris started off the introduction today, he mentioned the thing that everyone sees and hears everywhere. Guaranteed offer, guaranteed offer, guaranteed offer, guaranteed offer. Most people remember and understand things at a third or fourth grade level. Most people, not Chris, <laughs> not Chris. No, but, 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 but serious, I mean, it really like the, the more simple that it is, and the reason I share that is I see through businesses, we tend, to, as human beings, we tend to complicate things, right? You can see it. If, if you drive around Mankato, you've seen the billboards everywhere. If I asked you who else is on billboards or what other companies, you couldn't name anything, right? There's 40 words on them. The colors aren't right. They don't stand out. There's all these different reasons why you don't remember them. So when you're in business or you're, you're developing your personal brand, simplicity is key. Like making it really simple and easy to remember. And I'll give you some examples. Like if you have, um, a market, if you have marketing material out somewhere or you have literature or whatever it may be, business card, whatever, if I go to your website or I go to your social media, the message shouldn't be different. It should match. And too often, we as human beings start adding like, oh, well, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do this, and we want to vomit all over the page, all over the profile. We're like, we, we, we do this, we do that. We're the greatest at 90 different things. And it, I see it over and over again. And when the consumer looks at it, they're confused. They don't know, like, which career are you in? You got four different careers. I'm not sure which one you actually are active with. It says you have seven jobs. It says that you have 90 skills on LinkedIn. I'm not sure why you have those skills because I'm looking for something completely different. These are the things that are happening right now. I see it over and over again. I, I get a business card from someone and I look at it and I go, what do you do? And they tell me and I go, why doesn't your business card say that? It happens over and over again. The confusion of marketing, the confusion of branding is really a big thing. If people don't understand what you do and they don't understand what you're trying to solve, they are definitely not going to use you. They are definitely not going to use you. And so whatever it is that you're thinking about doing, now everyone has a different level of resources available to them, people available to them. I realize not everyone in the world is going to be able to go out and hire an entire team. But if you just start with the basics and you just start with, with creating a very simple message, it will make a huge difference in the response rate that you get. When every single time that someone sees something or hears something, it's the same, that's how you win. That's how you win. It's over and over and over again. It's just like, it's, the same, it's, it's tied in the same thing that if you go out and buy a new vehicle or a used vehicle, and then you notice that everyone that has the same one, you're like, wow, like I didn't realize that everyone drives the same vehicle as me. It's your reticular activator, right? It's like all of a sudden, it's like once you start seeing and hearing things, you can't unsee them, you can't unhear them. It starts to feel like it's far bigger, far more than you've ever heard before. But it only works well if it's the same, if it's the same message. It's that repetitious boredom. And what happens for a lot of business owners is that we have a hard time staying focused, right? So we're like, we're gonna do this today. Next week, we've decided we're going over here. We're like, hey, let's try this. Oh, that didn't work, so now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Nope, now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna try this career. We're gonna change the classes. We're gonna change the major. We're gonna change everything in life over and over and over again. And no one stays committed to anything. We lack focus, right? And so when things get tough or where we don't have success right out of the gate, we wanna change. We'd rather change than go through the challenges and we'd rather, we'd rather go step into something else than struggle. Like, we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to see anyone see us fail. So we're like, hey, you know what? Like, let's go over here. This is starting to get bad. Let me go over here, and it will be good for a second. It'll be the same way. And you see people constantly running away from themselves over and over and over again. So whatever it is that you do, stick with it and own it. Like, stick with it and own it. The thing that works best in the world today, however you put your message out there, is when you own something. 
right? So owning your message. And then the second step that the second step, and I get this question all the time is, well, if I'm just starting out in marketing or in business or, or, or I'm working for a company or a department, where should we start? What's the first place? I said, I don't know. Whatever the first place is, just stay there and own it. One of the beautiful things about marketing and about branding is everyone gives up before they actually have success. That's the best part. We just keep winning because we just stay with the same things and we stay consistent and we do them over and over and over again. And we'll get people that think they're competition, we'll get companies that think they're competition that will step in that space for one month or two months and they'll spend their marketing budget and they'll go, that didn't work, I'm out. Over and over and over again. And the challenge is, is that the first step into marketing and branding when no one knows who you are, when no one knows your brand or your company, it's hard. It's hard. It's 12, 18, 24 months losing money. Losing money. To get a return when you're initially creating your brand is really difficult. But over time, if you stay consistent and you stay with it, that's how you start to break through. You look at any company, the ones that have succeeded are the ones that can stomach that risk. They can stay in that space when they know that the phone isn't ringing, when they know that they're not receiving the messages, when they know that people aren't visiting the app or the website and filling out forms, and they stay consistent and they stay true with what they believe in, and they just keep going, and they take the information, whether it's in the analytics or the feedback that they receive, and they're constantly focused on making adjustments. Like, okay, we're getting a lot of traffic from this zip code, or we're getting a lot of traffic at this time, or we're getting a lot of traffic from this device. Like, we're getting a lot of traffic from this platform. Like, that information and that data is how you make better decisions. Any time that you spend and invest resources in marketing and branding, it's never a loss. There's always something to learn in life. And I think often now we're in such a society where we're, we're trained for this instant gratification that if we don't get something instant, we give up and we move on. And I can tell you that in marketing, branding, creating business, investing in whatever it may be for all of you, it takes a long time. And I've noticed over the last year, and, and, I'll, and I'll share this because it, it's, it's something that, I, that I've noticed more than ever before. So last year after the pandemic hit, one of the things that we got really focused on was creating opportunities for people that were looking for more. And so we created realestatescholarship.com and we started investing and paying for people to go get their real estate license. So we would pay for their real estate license, books, training, every single part of it, we'd invest. And in, in, in the reason we did it, our number one core value is to be generous, to give back and help people that might've been laid off, that maybe were in furlough, that maybe were in transition, maybe they were reevaluating life and deciding, hey, you know what, I wanna go a different direction. And so what we saw, when you look at realestatescholarship.com, and when you look at the way that we put that together, is I think about, when, when I think about business and I think about everything that's happened along the way, the thing that I've noticed that makes people the most successful is when they stay committed long-term, they win. What we've seen in real estate in general across the country, we have a lot of data to support this, is that last year, real estate, that new agents getting into the industry was up 30%. Getting people entering the real estate industry, it was up over 30% last year. The problem is, is that everyone getting into real estate, they're not willing to, they're not willing to, to, to stay focused and committed long-term, right? We're so trained now that we go in and we have to have success right away. And if we don't, we either think something's wrong with us or we lose our, our motivation and we, we go to the next place. And I see it over and over and over again, all over the country in all different brokerages. When you're in a business as a solopreneur, whether you own it or you're a part of that community and you're committed to a career like real estate, it doesn't happen overnight. Yet we, we see a lot of people three months in and you see the, we see the conversations on social media all over. Like, well, we changed another broker. We changed another broker. We went over here. We went over there. We made these moves. And I want to share that with you because what I've seen is that no one's committed long-term. And if anyone watching today decided that you're starting a business tomorrow or anyone in here that decides that we're gonna start a business 
How long are you going to give it? How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take to earn the trust in the referrals from your colleagues and friends and family where you have no background in that industry and you're just getting started? They're not going to use you right away, by the way. Most of them won't, especially on a bigger purchase like real estate and, and things like that. And you see too often that people stop right when they're about to succeed. You see it because we want instant gratification everywhere. We want instant success. You know, the gig economy and everything going on, we could pull out any app and join and, and be working in a few hours. We think that our career should be the same way. And you watch people and you're like, gosh, I know that person is gonna be so successful, but they just gave up. And a lot of times, they don't even know that they're exiting our industry. They have no idea. I've seen it all over. They go, well, we're going over to this brokerage. What they don't know is they're actually just one step away from exiting the industry because they're not focused. No one is willing to commit long-term. When I look at the top real estate professionals inside of our organization, I've interviewed so many of them and they've become dear friends of mine. We have been committed long-term together. When I look at their business, they didn't start getting referrals till like year three or four. Year three or four. And I'm watching people over the last year that are getting in the industry and three or four months in, they're discouraged because they're not getting referrals. Most people that are entering a new industry, a new career, it's a startup. It's a startup. And so I wanna make sure that all of you today, whatever your journey is, whatever path you're decided you're gonna go down, most of you are in some sort of startup phase. And are you willing to commit when you might be losing money, where things might not be working, are you willing to commit long-term when it doesn't seem like you're headed on the right path? Those are the ones that win. The ones that go down that path and they take the bumps, the bruises along the way, it's not easy. It's not easy. Those are the ones that always make it. And it's the other thing too is so much of it is around that scarcity abundance mindset. The ones that do the best know that, hey, my first early transactions, my first couple of years in a career, I know that I'm not gonna get the referrals, I know that I'm not gonna get the support, but I know that every time that I meet someone, I get the opportunity to build a friendship, to build a relationship where those people, those families will support me down the road and the multiplier of the opportunities to build friendships and build relationships grows year after year after year, no matter what your career is. But the challenge is, is most people hit the stop button because of the scarcity mindset. Like, oh, I only got this opportunity or it was this or I didn't get paid that or it was whatever, whatever the scarcity mindset is. We're, the scarcity mindset people are very easy to find because all they want to tell you is about the problems. They just want to say, well, that's wrong. This doesn't work. That's not right. You can just hear it right away. I mean, it's just one thing after another. Abundance ones are like, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy that I get an opportunity to meet people and connect with people. And those are the ones that win in the world, that go into every single meeting, appointment, wherever they go in life, they know that something good is going to come out of that connection. And it might not even be buying or selling a product or a service. It could be something completely different. But investing at a really high level in connecting with people and showing up knowing every single place that I go, I'm gonna positively impact everyone and everything that I come in contact with makes life a lot easier. When you know it's impossible for anyone to upset you. Impossible. That's the state of mind that I would love to see everyone in the world in. Because when you have that mindset, you actually can't lose. Because every single place that you go, you know something great is gonna happen. You know that someone is gonna come out of that connection, that relationship, that friendship, you know something great's gonna come out of it. And a lot of times in life, you actually don't know what that is then. You don't know what that is then. It could be five years, 10 years, 12 years, 20 years down the road. I've had things come back from years and years and years ago where there was a connection made, there was a friendship, conversation, client, past client, sometimes not even a client, just an interaction. Those things start to come back later in life. 
and make sure that you never find yourself in a position where you burn a bridge. Whether that's you decide, you know what, this career's not for me, you decide that this school's not for me, this job's not for me, that my, these friends aren't for me, whatever it is, the ones that show up and are willing to have those tough conversations and say, this isn't for me. I, I, this isn't for me and I'm making changes. And you can sit down and you can have those conversations face to face, that will pay you dividends forever. I see it over and over again in so many industries. So many of the, the industries that are, that are really sort of focused on independent contractors, people leave without saying goodbye, right? No, there's no employment relationship. Hey, you know what? I've decided that I'm no longer gonna be at this brokerage, at that company, at this place. See you later. No message, no video, no email, no gratitude. That will chase them their whole life, just so you know. Like exiting companies and exiting friendships and family and people, whatever those, those choices and, and things are that you have to do, the ones that are willing to sit down and have that conversation face to face will win. I promise you. They're the most uncomfortable moments that I've ever had in my life, but they are also the ones that have defined who I am. Every time that I left a company, I went and sat down with the decision maker. Even though I could have left in the middle of the night and been totally fine and sent the text message and the email, hey, just wanna let you know I'm out. I went and sat down and said, I am going to leave with the highest level of integrity anywhere that I am. The last thing that I want in my life is to someone to say that I don't have integrity. I will do everything in my power to take the high road. And you'll see it. When you put yourself out there like I have, there's Reddit feeds, Twitter feeds, comments, this, that, people in the industry that all have these things to say. Not one time have I ever responded to one person. Not one time in my entire life have I ever put someone down. There's not one thing on the internet of me responding to anything in a negative way. Never, not one, and you'll never see it. I will take so many shots for my family, for my friends, for my team, because that's what ultimate leadership is. If you're gonna put yourself out there, you have to know these are the things that are gonna come with it. And what I, what I learned throughout the years is that if someone has an issue with who you are, whether that's a, a comment that was shared directly to you or social media or a message or whatever it is, that's their issue, not yours. That's on them, not you. Forever, I used to think like I was, when I'd hear comments of different things, I go like, gosh, like am I, am I cut out for this? I went from having all these friends and, and being likable, spending time in Mankato, to all of a sudden there was this, by the way, when you put yourself out there like that, the number of people that don't like what you do is actually very small, but when you're connected to it, it feels a lot bigger than it is. And what I also found is, a lot of the people that are gonna give you feedback when you do whatever you do, are people usually related to that, that are, they're sort of in that industry, right? It's not like the consumers in general, it's usually people that have envy or jealousy that are in that same space. Why I share that today is because if you make a decision to put yourself out there on video, video is another area that gets people, that just gets them really frustrated. It gets competitors, people in other industries, people in other places, it gets them really frustrated because they're insecure, because they don't wanna be on video. They don't like the way that they look. They don't like the way that they sound. So the easiest thing to do as human beings is attack you and tell you and comment and go, oh my gosh, I saw this person just got in this industry and they're on video every day and they're terrible. Awful, the camera's falling on the ground, the audio is awful, the lighting's bad, it's shaky, that it's, the person's super nervous, and all these comments are happening. This could be in school, this could be in business, this could be at a personal level, it could be a lot of different things. But I see it over and over again. And the thing is, is what I worry about for my life is when that noise goes away. Because then I know that I'm no longer making the same impact in the world. When people don't notice what we're doing, when people don't notice me, when there are no comments and there are no criticism and blogs and all those things, it means that we no longer have the attention. And that's a bad place to be when you have a brand and when you're putting yourself out there. So I welcome the comments, I welcome all the conversations because I know the more of that we have, that it's actually working. And I turned 
what most people would perceive as a negative and I've turned it into a positive. And when we launch a new marketing initiative, the thing that I'm most excited for is the naysayers and the doubters. I'm like, I know if we get them, we're winning. Like I know that if we put something out there, if we get them, we are on the right path. And we have never been wrong when we've got that feedback, not one time. And so whatever those things are in your life where you might be in a position where there are things that might be negative, there might be a lot of things that you are facing right now, a lot of resistance, are you still powering through that? Have you changed your mindset to, to, to look at everything as a positive? Like what are those things that, that you faced? Maybe people have doubted you in your life. Maybe people have told you that you're not gonna succeed. Whatever those things may be, are there things that you're facing right now that you could actually flip into a positive? And only you can ask that question, right? In the morning when you wake up, that time that you get to spend in front of the, in the mirror, that's the time where you get to be real with yourself or lie. You get to pick, right? That's where you get to look at yourself and go, am I my best right now? Are these comments, are these friends, is this company, is this school, is this class, is this instructor, are these things affecting who I am? And how can I change it? Because what we see often is everyone wants to start blaming everyone else for the problems instead of looking in the mirror and taking that responsibility and going, you know what? I'm the only one that can control this. I need to show up better. I need to show up better. I need to be a better person. I need to be a better leader. Like those are the things that you can control. And the more that you invest in being uncomfortable, the better it's gonna get. And the easiest thing to do from the get-go with no money and only requires time is just to pull out your phone and hit record. That is the easiest thing. But you notice everything that I shared today is that it all works together. If you're not a great person and you're not focused on being a great human being, a great leader, a great family member, a great friend, a great classmate, a great colleague, all those things show up in your videos, in your marketing, in conversations like this, they show up in life. No one can make it through life faking it. And anything that you are thinking privately shows up publicly. You see it. Doesn't even, I don't even need the words. I can tell right now by people's body movements. I can tell by their body language. I can tell where most of you are at in life just by that. And most of you can too. You know when someone walks into a room or someone walks into, uh, into a meeting or walks into a restaurant or wherever it may, church, whatever it may be, you can tell where people are at, right? You see people, you're like, that person's confident. And when you look at confidence, when you think about delivering, branding, and all these things, when you look at confidence, one of the things that often gets misconstrued is people have mistaken confidence with cockiness or having an ego, right? And so the people that I've seen that are most successful in life are the ones that have a very high level of confidence, not cockiness. Those are two different things. Confidence is when something bad happens, you have a person or a leader that says, we're gonna get through this, we're gonna make it. Together, we'll get there. It might not be a straight line, we might face a lot of challenges, but I can promise you that we're gonna get through this. Cockiness is a completely different thing. And I know a lot of people sort of blend those two together, but I can tell you right now that if you, wanna, if you really wanna build a personal brand and you really wanna put yourself out there, having the confidence is key. Having the confidence to power through when you face the resistance and the feedback and the naysayers and the doubters. Like those things are gonna happen if you put yourself out there. And the best part is, is not everyone in here and not everyone watching wants to put themselves out there but I can tell you that along the way, you're gonna find someone that, that wants to be out there. Whether that's someone that you work with, a friend, a family member. So even if that's not you, you can support them better, right? You can challenge them more. Like, hey, I'm kind of sensing that you don't really love this. Is this even the path that you wanna be on? Right, having people around you and then also yourself challenging people when you can tell something's off are the best things you could ever do. I challenge people to a level that you have never seen. And I will say exactly what I know they're thinking. 
and go, hey, is everything okay? I don't know, you just seem kind of off. Or this doesn't seem to be working. Are you even passionate about this anymore? Right, and those are the types of things that if you could give one gift to the world is to ask those questions when you meet people or see people that you know. And guess what? It's not always gonna be well received. But if you have the right people in your circle, they'll want it. They'll want that feedback. They'll wanna grow. How do I get the edge? How do I get a little bit better? And you see it all the time, whatever that is that, that you want and whatever it is that you are in right now, you'll find the highest performers are the ones that are driving more feedback, more accountability, how do I get better? And those are the people that end up being the most successful in the world. It doesn't change. And so for those of you that leave today, that go home and record a video and send it to me on social media, you're probably gonna be the most successful people. I'm just saying. Like I've seen it. I know that wherever I go, I take a video when I leave and I acknowledge the people, the things that were said and I say thank you to everything that I do. And the people in life that are willing to take that 30, 60, 90 seconds, because we all have that time, are the ones that actually do the best. The ones that are continuing to put that gratitude out into the universe, that positive energy, it comes back. It comes back. And the ones that are willing to go out there and be a student first are the ones that also do the best. The ones that are constantly trying to learn, constantly trying to grow. The highest performers that I know in my life that are at a completely different level of success, personally and professionally, are still trying to figure out the basics. Like they're going back and going like, how do I just move the needle just a little bit here? How do I get just a little bit better? And some of my friends, you're, you're looking at me like, I, I can't figure out how you need anything else to be better. But they're constantly striving to just get a little bit better. And we all have that opportunity, right? We all have that opportunity. And when we invest in getting better, it helps all of it. And so when I shared at the beginning about the omnipresent, like, you know, where you are on social, all these other things, it also pertains to the leadership side, the personal development side. You could see how this entire thing works together. And so today I just wanted to share, those are some of the things that are happening inside our company. And I don't know if, if the people watching or here today expected something completely different to tell you how cool the billboards look and the radio and the TV, but I just wanted to share, like those are the types of things that make the difference in the world. So thank you. And so we have some questions or? Go ahead, and I'll repeat the question too so everyone that's listening online can hear it. I, I'll repeat the question. David Limo. Yeah, and as Great right to now, see you. Great to see you too. As of right now, I'm in the process of building a startup. It's called Pursuit Finance. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much a budgeting platform for mm -hmm. Gen Z. And as of right now, myself and Zach Green, he has some experience in business as well. Yeah. Um, the biggest question that I have for you is, once the platform itself is built, what are some, what are two ways that we can utilize ways to um, attract the consumer to our platform? Yeah, so, so, you're, you're, so you're creating a, it's a startup, it's an investment platform for, for Gen, Z, Gen Z, you said? Yeah, it's a platform that allows Gen Z to understand their finances. To allow Gen Z to understand their finances. So what I would do is I would find out through asking questions, where do Gen Z people spend their time? What platforms, what things, what, what are things that they do in life? And I'd spend all my time doing that research and that's where I'd be, wherever that may be, whether that's social media, whether that's internet, Google, apps, podcasts, YouTube shows, radio, TV, OTT live streaming, iHeartRadio apps, whatever that may be, I would find out where your audience is spending their time. I think one of the things I see often where people make a mistake is they go out and, and invest money in marketing where they like to spend time. And they go and, and then go, and go, hey, like I'm gonna go here and, and spend money on marketing. I'm like, yeah, but what's your target audience? They're not there. They're in a completely different place. And that's where I'd start. And I would find as many people that you know that fit that category, and I would start asking a lot of questions. Work, career, school, home, family, friends, 
commutes, vehicles, transportation, public transportation. Do they travel? Do they stay in town? Where do they shop? Do they shop on an app? Do they leave? I would ask all those types of questions. And I think the way that you really have ultimate success when you're in that startup phase is you have to get so obsessed with going out and finding the information. Once you have all the information, there are a lot of people that can give you and, and, and give you recommendations of where to invest your marketing dollars. But until you have all of that information, it's really hard to make decisions. And the best way to do it, especially, you know, I mean, a lot of the data today is really skewed. I mean, the digital side has a lot more data, obviously, and social media has a lot more data. But a lot of the traditional stuff, I mean, using Nielsen rating systems, I mean, it's a very antiquated way. I never trust any of the rating systems. I trust the questions that I ask. And I, you know, and maybe you decide that you're going to get in Ubers or they get in taxis or whatever it may be. What radio station do they have on? What do they listen to? Do they stream? Do they listen to terrestrial radio? Like those are the types of things. And if, if I could just leave the, the, the one takeaway is being obsessed with learning is a big part of creating a brand, like a massive part. Thanks for being here and thanks for the question. Thank yeah. Go ahead. Um, my name is Doug Green. I am currently, <clears throat> excuse me, an entrepreneur and uh, studying marketing here at uh, MNSU. Uh, and my question to you, um, you were consistently talking about you know, being a leader throughout your presentation. Um, what do you believe you know, maybe three values, qualities, or morals um, is required to be a, a very good leader? Yeah, great question. Um, what values um, or things are required to be a great leader? I love that you asked that because actually, um, Ashley from our company and our internal communication asked me that same question because I said, what, what things should I talk about today? Um, and so I love that you asked that. I think the, the one that always comes to mind is vulnerability first, right? The, 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 the leader that can get in front of, whether this is one person or a thousand people that, can, that is willing to be vulnerable and go, hey, uh, we made a mistake, I made a mistake, we're facing some challenges here, we didn't get this quite right. We rolled this out. It wasn't perfect. The other thing is transparency. Transparency, right? You know that inside an organization, people are gonna have side conversations. Like, you think about family and friends and all those other things, there's a lot of dysfunction in life and in the world. And that happens in business, that happens in school, that happens everywhere in the world, right? And you know that there's gonna be side conversations and you know that people aren't gonna be 100% happy with every single decision that you make. They can't be, there's no way. We're all different and that's the beautiful thing is it makes us, it, it makes us look at things from a different lens, a different perspective. We're all unique. And so having that transparency is really important. When things come out and they're not right, people know, just have to own it. And the last one, and this is the one that, that I always tend to really stay focused on is, is humble, is humble. Right, and you look at as you grow and as there's more success, whether that's personally, professionally, maybe you're just, your level of success or your interest of success is just being a better person. It doesn't necessarily have to mean more money or different job titles. There's all different things in the world, but being humble is a really important one. And what I would share with you from everyone that's known me from the way I grew up to those that are supporting me right now, watching online, whether that's on the Mankato Zoom or on our personal social media platforms is I haven't changed. I haven't changed. Like every, all the time people go, how, how are you like so calm and humble about everything that's going on and all the people in your company and all of the success? Because I've made a commitment in my life that I will never change that way. I will stay humble the entire time. And those three things I think are three things that make a great leader I've seen a lot of leaders that, that lead companies well, that lead people well, that aren't really great people. That all they wanna talk about is how great they are. I've seen it over and over again. And so just being committed and staying humble is such a huge part of it. Thank you. Hi Chris. Um, What's going on? Not too much, it's school, but um, I just wanted to thank you for coming down here on Friday evening and spend your time with us tonight. But what career mistake of yours has given you yeah. What career mistake has given me my biggest lesson? Um, there's a lot. I mean, it, you know, when you ask a question about mistakes and, 
in our organization, we look at failure as learning opportunities. I mean, I probably have 10 to 20 learning opportunities a day, a day. We don't get everything right. I mean, I think a lot of people think that we do, but we don't. We make a lot of mistakes. Um, the, I think the biggest growth moments for me were really around video, actually, and, and putting those videos out there and realizing how bad I was. And I'll go like, wow, like I actually did that many videos and I look that way or that audio is that way. And what I learned about putting that out there is that when you put yourself out there, you're going to be your own worst critic, which I shared earlier. But what happened is that negative feedback that I thought was the worst thing ever, like what you just asked, ended up being the best thing ever. And so I think a lot of times in life, what you find is the things that you think are bad or challenging or not great or don't feel good, actually later in life become the biggest growing, they become the biggest growth opportunities that you've ever experienced or you ever thought you would have. And it's amazing to me when I look back at those things and, and, and what had happened along the way, it's incredible how those moments defined who I am. And just taking that step and putting yourself out there and being willing to be comfortable I just wasn't smart enough to, to, to really vet myself before I did it. If I was, I would have never put it out there. But I did it anyways. And when you put yourself out there like that, I think that's the thing that makes a huge difference. And also with that, a lot of times people sort of tell themselves a reason why they can't do it. I'm more introverted. Oh, I'm more of an extrovert. I can't pay attention. I don't have, I'm not detail oriented. Um, I'm not tech savvy, uh, whatever those things are, right? We, we're always telling ourselves something. Some of the most successful people on video are some of the most introverted, antisocial people that I have ever seen. And they're very open about it. But they are also very committed to growth. And you have to decide, what are you more committed to? The excuses that you keep telling yourself or are you, or are you committed to the upside of investing in doing things that make you uncomfortable because you know that that uncomfortableness will turn into the highest level of growth that you've ever experienced. Thank you. We got any questions online? Yeah, a question online from Michael. Um, what books do you suggest to read to learn about networking? What books do I suggest to, um, to read about networking? Wow, that's a... Um, that's a tough question because I think of networking a bit different now. I think of networking more on social media than I do in person. I think a lot more about video like I shared, going live, having a conversation with the people that you're connected to. That feels more like networking. I think to me, one of the things that, that I've noticed is when I hear the word networking, to me it sounds like people are trying to sell something. It's like we're all going to network, but we all want to take something from it. Like, and I, and, I, and I see that over and over again. There are some great books about the, 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 the way to communicate with people um, in teams. I mean, a lot of networking is really in a group environment or in a team environment. I mean, reading uh, Lincioni's Five Dysfunctions of a Team is a really big book to understand, like, what are the dysfunctions that are going to happen inside of a team? That's a, um, that's a phenomenal book. Tim Grover, um, who was Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant's coach, Relentless, is another book. A lot of things that, I, when I think about marketing, I think about how we show up. And a lot of it's personal development. It's less about like, here are the tips, the tricks, or the actionable steps that you have to take to do well when you're networking with others. I think less about that, and I think if we show up as, as a great human being, and we invest in ourselves, and we're better, I think that the rest of it works itself out. And a lot of times what I would say is, when I think about networking, and I think, of, and, and there's all different forms of networking, right? There's groups, there's events, there's clubs like this, there's all different types. What I truly believe about networking is where you actually get the most out of life is where you make investments first, you make deposits first, and withdrawals later. One of the biggest mistakes that I see in networking is that everyone goes in trying to take withdrawals and they've never made any deposits. They've never made any deposits in people. 
They've never made any deposits in relationships, in friendships, in organizations. I see it over and over again. Everyone goes into meeting number one, everyone's asking for something. Like, hey, I, wanna, I, I need help with this. I need this. I need that. Start showing up, just investing in others, and you'll be surprised how much comes back to you and you never, has to, never have to ask for anything again. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, we have Yvonne would like to know, how do we send you the video that you challenged us? Whoa, Yvonne, I like it. Yvonne would like to know, how do we send the video that you challenge us to do? So the best way is um, all my social media platforms are on connectwithkl.com. So connectwithkl.com. I know that one person in this room is going to do it because that's the only person that wrote it down. Um, I'm just giving everyone a hard time. Um, connectwithkl.com has my personal social media from Facebook to LinkedIn to Twitter, um, Instagram. Um, you pick the platform that you love, Yvonne, um, and you send that video to any of them. I monitor all of my social media. So it's just connectwithkl.com and it has a list of all of the links. She's going to do something. Yvonne is going to do something in life, I promise you. Like the, the person that asked, like, how do we send that video that you challenged us to do? Those are the types of people. I don't know how anyone in this room or anyone on the other live stream, how you find out who Yvonne is, but that's the type of people you want in your life. I'm just telling you right now. You want the people that are going to ask those types of questions. And what I would do if I were everyone here or everyone on the Zoom or watching the stream is I would try to figure out an Eventbrite or this club, find out who Yvonne is, how she registered, and go send her a message. I'm just telling you right now. I've done this long enough to know that those are the people that are gonna be the most successful in the world. So thank you for asking that, Yvonne. Thank you. Charlie, you had a question in the back? Yeah, we got, um, who's the favorite, what's the favorite interview you've had on your podcast? What's my favorite interview? Uh, ooh. This is from Chrissy. Chrissy, what's my favorite interview on my podcast? The, um, the Chris Lindahl Show. It's, uh, the one that stands out to me is Mark. And Mark's the CEO of Feed My Starving Children. So he, I just, this always stood with me. Um, he, he, had this, he had this advice. Um, in, in Feed My Starving Children, is an incredible organization um, that, that really helps, um, and they're really helping with, with hunger across the world. And what he said, the advice that he received from, from someone along the way, and he shared on the podcast, is that tens of thousands of children are dying every day, but we have to help them one by one. Because if we go try to solve tens of thousands, hundreds of millions of people in hunger overnight, we actually won't accomplish anything. But if we help them one by one, and we make an impact one at a time, we know that every single day, if we're helping one more person, that we're closer to our goal. And I think so often in life that we get so overwhelmed with this huge audacious number or goal or this massive big why that everyone's told us that we have to have that we never achieve it, right? So that's the, that's the takeaway. Thank you, Chrissy. That's the takeaway that, that it, when I think about the podcast, that's, that advice is just, I just keep playing that in my head over and over again. Here's a guy that has seen hunger problems all over the world is one of the more generous people that I've ever met. And he gets this advice. He's like, we, we have to start helping one person at a time. One person at a time. And so I think that's the same for, for all of us is that, you know, we have to have that patience to know that we're not gonna, we're not gonna win everything. We're not gonna accomplish everything overnight. It, it's gonna take time. But as long as we're taking one step forward, you know, we're just one foot in front of the other, that's how we, that's how we actually make a huge difference in the world. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I got one from Allison. Um, as a soon-to-be new agent, what do you So from Allison, um, Allison is um, a soon-to-be real estate agent. Congra real estate agent, I'm assuming. Is it a real estate agent or insurance agent or? Just said agent. I'm assuming real estate agent. Well, congratulations, Allison. That's super exciting. Um, what is the, you know, when I think about the, the number way, one way to brand yourself is there are enough people around each person here today or watching online to have a successful career in whatever we want. 
The question is, are you going to be top of mind? And the first and best way, because I'm assuming, Allison, and I, and I don't know enough about your situation, but you can send me a private message if you have further questions, I'd love to help you, um, is usually when you're getting started, you don't have a lot of money, right? You don't have a lot of resources to invest. But what you do have is your time. And if you have a cell phone, I would say the best thing that you can do is video. One of the challenges that so many people have is they think that they've got to create this massive brand all over the place to everyone when in reality, all you have to do is be the brand of the people that love you. Like they'll champion you when you put yourself out there and you're uncomfortable, when you go live, whatever that may be. They'll stand behind you, they'll invest in you, they'll cheer you on as long as you're willing to do it. That is by far the best place to start for probably everyone watching, if they're thinking about starting a brand, start with the people that love you, right? So often we have a tendency to go out and start doing marketing and all these things in other places when we have people right in front of us that love us, like us, and trust us, and want to use us. We just have to show up and be in front of them. Those are the things that matter the most. And the consistency behind that, right? I'm not talking go out and do one video tomorrow and quit. I'm talking you show up every single day and do video, 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 video. The thing that'll work best, Allison, is if you do the videos and they're 100% educational. Here's the market update. Here's the way to get your house ready to sell. Here's the way to find a home in a low inventory market. And then also, I would just say, everyone knows their audience and their following better than I do. And so just cater whatever the value is that you're providing and the messaging to the people that follow you. Right? If, Allison, if the people that follow you, if you have more renters, then maybe you talk about buying your first house. If you have a following where more of the people own homes, then maybe you talk more about that and about the market update and about what the market's doing. Right? And doing the educational pieces and doing the things that people don't know and just constantly educating consumers, that the more content that you put out there educating, just like I said earlier, when you start to make all those deposits, people will just naturally want to give back to you. It's the law of reciprocity and fair exchange. It's the same way the gift giving works. When someone gives you a gift, you feel obligated that you have to give a gift back. It's the exact same thing with video. If someone provides you with a significant amount of value, they feel obligated to give you something back. That could be business, that could be referral, that could be positive feedback. There are a lot of different, that could be comments, likes, hearts, shares, cares, everything else. It could be anything. But just when you put yourself out there, you're gonna get a lot of feedback from the people that are closest to you. So congratulations, Allison, thanks for the question. She would like to mention that she is going through your scholarship program. Oh, awesome, yeah. Well, then you don't have to worry about any of that. We have, uh, uh, well, thank you, Allison. I, I didn't, uh, when he didn't say real estate agent, I didn't recognize that. Um, the, the hardest part of most businesses is actually getting the business. It really is. Like, how am I going to generate business? And inside of our organization for Allison, we, because we put so much marketing and branding out there, we have so much opportunity right out of the gate for uh, our scholarship applicants. So um, you'll definitely do more, Allison, by doing video but it won't be required because you'll have so many opportunities right out of school that it that won't matter as much. So, yeah. I have one more from Michelle. Perfect. Um, what is one thing you wish you would have done or? From Michelle, what is one thing that I wish I would have done or known when in college? Everything that I shared today, I didn't have anyone around me that shared one thing that I said today, not one. We were in a different time, a different era. I wish that I would have showed up more for events like this. I wish I would have showed up more for educational things. And I wish I would have like joined more clubs, gained more information, invested more in personal development. Those are the types of things that I didn't do as much of that I had to do after, my, um, after I graduated from Mankato. Those are the things that I had to do after the fact. And there are so many opportunities at Mankato in person and virtually, where everyone gets the opportunity to grow if they show up, right? And there's just so many different things that I, I wish that I would have done more personal development, leadership, training. I mean, I didn't 
you know, I, this, this sounds crazy and people always ask this. I didn't take one marketing class at Mankato, zero. I didn't take one marketing class the entire time, right? So I, I, when I was here, I had an opportunity where I could have learned a lot about marketing, but I had to learn those things later through trial and error and through just, you know, just constantly trying and evaluating and asking questions. Um, but, but that's for me is, is just really, you know, I, I think one of the things that it was mentioned earlier about it being a Friday night, I was with, uh, with Charlie and Dylan and our team earlier, and I said, I wonder how many college students are going to show up on Zoom or on our, our, our uh, social media profiles or in person on a Friday night, right? On a Friday night. Like, I don't know if I would have. Like, I don't know that I would have, which is just such a testament to everyone that's in this room and everyone that's on the live stream. Like that commitment to wanting to learn, wanting to grow, wanting to hear different stories, different perspectives, taking notes, taking action. Most of you are way further ahead than I was at this point. Most of you are way further ahead. Thank you. And it, that's all the questions. Does anyone have any other questions here? So there, go ahead. Who do you got winning the game on Sunday? <laughs> who, who do I got winning the game on Sunday? I'm just a huge leadership person. It's really hard to, to go against Tom Brady. Exactly. It's really hard to go against Tom Brady. Um, I mean, he's intense, right? I mean, and, and not everyone loves people that win at that level. Um, but I, I love the leadership. I mean, every time that I see him come onto the field, just watching that passion at his age is what I think we all could have more of. I, I think we all could just, every day that we show up in life with that level of passion and commitment to growing, getting better, health, wellness, everything that he does, like there's, there's a, there, there really is something to be learned um, from watching him. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Did, someone else had one other question, I think. You are kind of had your hand half up. No. Just ask it. I was just wondering, like, in college, what was your greatest experience outside of the classroom? Like, not that you learned education-wise, but other than that. What was my greatest experience out of the classroom? Mm -hmm. So what was my greatest experience out of the classroom in Mankato? Yeah, like, through MSU. Like, what did they provide you, kind of? Okay. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> um, so when I, uh, so when I was in, uh, when, I, when I first got to Mankato, um, we, uh, we had a, um, I ended up joining sort of late in the season, this uh, intramural, or, yeah, intramural flag football team. And we won, um, we won the, uh, the Mankato division. We then won the state division. Um, and then we went to nationals in Lincoln, Nebraska. And the university actually provided us with a van. So the university provided us with a van. We all, like there was like, eight of us, we all had to go to, um, I think it was, the, it might have been the Taylor Center. We had to go watch this, this sort of training video on what it's like to drive a university vehicle. I mean, we had a gas cart. I mean, they sponsored the whole thing. I mean, we're, we're uh, 18 and 19 years old, and we hit the road to Lincoln, Nebraska with a Mankato van, uh, and we got destroyed by every team. I mean, <laughs> the, our first game was against Air Force. And I think we lost like 100 to zero, and I'm not even kidding. It was so embarrassing. But it was such a great memory that, and what I loved about it was the university, I mean, we were 18 and 19 years old, and they, they gave us a university van and sent us to Lincoln, Nebraska, right? I mean, I just love the trust. I mean, it was, we had, there was so much growth, there was such a growth opportunity for all of us, you know, at that age to have that sort of responsibility to take a vehicle, hotel rooms, every, everything that we had to do at that age. I mean, we had, ne had no experience with taking a van halfway across the United States uh, and, and go participate in a, um, a football championship with no supervisors or no supervision. I think it's one of the greatest memories that I had here. Yeah, thank you for that question. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Go ahead. Um, how old were you when you re like finally realized like, you are successful? Yeah, so, so how old was I when I finally realized that um, I made it or that I was successful? I actually don't ever feel like you get there. Like, I don't, like, to me, like, there, the measurement of success or you made it is, there's not, a, like, a finish line. 
Like I think there are so many things that, that I can improve on in life that I continue to invest in and continue to get better. And I just haven't found many people that are world-class in every single part of their life. I think we can all improve and we can all get better. Um, that's not to say that I'm not self-aware that I'm around a community in our organization. We have a lot of really successful people, like a, re- a lot of really successful people. And anyone that's inside of KLRE or has been a part of it, there are impressive people there, like a lot of really impressive people. So I definitely do feel the success and I love seeing the accomplishments of so many people around me, but I also don't feel like there's like a hard finish line or there's like a day where we're standing at a podium and it's like, hey, we made it. Like we are successful. Because I think at any point in time, it all can go away for any of us. It could be our health. It could be our wealth. It could be the people around us. Like every single day, something can change. And so I just feel like the moment that someone thinks that they made it, that's usually the day that it all goes away. That's usually the day it goes away. And so I'm just so obsessed with just getting better every single day, knowing that what I am chasing, none of us will ever catch. But if we just improve every day, that's success to me. Thanks for the question. Any other ones? That's it. All right. Well, great. Thank well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Thanks to everyone on Zoom and social media and everyone here. Yeah. Obviously, uh, thank you very much for yeah. coming down here and spending your time and talents with us. I think everyone uh, can obviously see why KLR is doing so well with uh, you at the head. So, again, we appreciate it. Great to have you as an alum and great to have you down here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for coming. Give them a round of applause. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all the comments and questions and hopefully hearts online. I appreciate it.